My name is Jacob Hernandez, and I am doing fantasy football research, so you don't have to. The first player you should be looking at this week is Justin Fields. Andy Dalton went down with injury against the Bengals and may not return for week three. Justin Fields is a good quarterback, a rookie quarterback, and he can use his legs, so added fantasy points right there on the ground and maybe a rushing touchdown. The first person you should look to add is Sony Michelle. Daryl Henderson is dealing with a rib cartilage injury, which may keep him out for week three. If you're weak on running back, Sonny Michelle is a great pickup, and he is even worth starting in week three if Daryl Henderson is out. The next person I'm looking to add is Cordero Patterson. He may have wide receiver and running back eligibility in some weeks. He is taking the important touches from Mike Davis near the goal line, and last week had two touchdowns. Meaning, I will be looking at Mike Davis and maybe not trusting him as my RB2. He may fall down to a flex play or even a bench stash if Cordero Patterson keeps taking these important touches. The 49ers backfield is always a question mark in fantasy football. All three running backs went down with injury last week, and the injury reports are not fully back yet. So I will be watching their backfield and maybe not putting them in this week. Miles Gaskin, the running back for the Miami Dolphins, has had under 10 touches in both weeks so far to start the season. For someone who drafted him as a solid RB2 in one of the early rounds, he's been very disappointing. I may look to trade him or look to pick up one of the running backs on the waiver wire that has good upside to help my running back strength. Trey Sermon was supposed to be the answer in the 49ers backfield. He was a healthy scratch for week one and had one carry, fumbled it, and got injured in week two. He was drafted to be my RB3 to come off the bench during bye weeks and bad matchups for my starting running backs. I will definitely be watching him in the next couple weeks to see if he can become the starting running back that I hoped he would be. He may even be an early drop candidate. The two Jets running backs, Michael Carter and Ty Johnson, are very interesting. I would definitely be looking to stash one of them. Tevin Coleman was supposed to be the starter in week one, but has quickly been phased out of the lineup. He only had five carries in week two, with Michael Carter and Ty Johnson taking over the starting role. Next, I am keeping a very close eye on Zach Moss from the Buffalo Bills. Like Trey Sermon, he was a healthy scratch in week one. Some people might have dropped him after week one due to this healthy scratch. He is a good handcuff for Devin Singletary, and if Devin Singletary goes down with injury, I would definitely pick him up. Somehow, Tony Pollard is only 54% rostered in Yahoo Leagues. He's one of the few handcuffs that is an actually good player, and he's a must-add this week. For the last running back on my list, Alexander Madison, if you have bench space, he's definitely a great stash. Dalvin Cook had an injury scare that left him out of the fourth quarter, and he definitely will have another one. The last call to pick up Rondale Moore is right now. He had eight targets last week, and he plays the Jaguars in week three. Henry Ruggs is very much a boomer bust type player. However, with a hot Raiders offense, he has a lot of potential to be a great wide receiver for your team. Darnell Mooney played 100% of the snaps last week against the Bengals and received eight targets. If Justin Fields starts week three, Darnell Mooney could be a decent flex option. KJ Osborne has 15 targets in two games for the Minnesota Vikings. He has emerged as the wide receiver three for a high-powered offense. He will definitely be one to keep an eye on in the coming weeks. Zach Pascal of the Indianapolis Colts has three touchdowns in two games. He's a great wide receiver to keep your eye on as he has shown himself to be an end zone threat. Nelson Aguilar is the wide receiver too for the New England Patriots. And if Mac Jones throws the ball, which there wasn't a need to versus the Jets, he could be a good wide receiver for the end of your bench. Sterling Shepard is a little bit over 50% rostered. However, he's the number one wide receiver for the New York Giants. And if he's on your waiver wire, you need to pick him up. Rashad Bateman is a great IR stash if you have an IR spot in your leagues. He was one of the wide receivers drafted for Lamar Jackson, and the Ravens wide receiving core is not very strong without him.